Hello there, my name is Crimson, and recently I made a level called Box 1.0, which was, unsurprisingly, 1.0 styled. Unfortunately, I'm not 100% happy with how that came out, and I think I know why. I approached it with the modern mindset of design style, which, there being only two block types and a handful of accessories, didn't go all that well for me. So today, I'm going to be trying the other main method of decorating with 1.0 limitations, object spam. I have a little layout here, which was built in the Update 1.2 style. It has the ball portal, but only the 1.0 decorations. First things first, there are a few things that were not in 1.0 that I am going to be using. The first being object limit. This will probably be above 2,000 objects. The second being the 10 block buffer. In older versions, you couldn't place stuff for the first 10 odd blocks. The next is copy and paste, which was not a thing in 1.0 but copy and paste is useful, so I'm going to ignore it. And last is free move, because this makes object spam a lot easier to not have to manually move around everything. First thing I'm gonna do is this sort of landing part right here. For this spike, I'm just gonna copy and paste, move it up and move it up and move it up and move it up. Also gonna copy this thing over to these other few spike pillars. And now to the first actual platform. My idea is to take these three objects, layer them just like that, and then spam these all the way down the side. However, using hotkeys, there's a lot easier of a way than copy and pasting and then moving it and then copy and pasting and then moving it. Currently, my copy and paste keybind is set to Shift and C. I believe the default is Control D, and this should work the same way. When this is selected and you're moving it around with free move, if you hold the modifier key, which for me is shift, but for you is probably control, and then just click the button, then it just duplicates that and you're still selecting the object. Just going like this, I can create a smooth slope all the way down there. Oh, these are some wacky hitboxes. Wait, does that just... Oh, oops. You can just climb that. Upon closer inspection, I think I'm just gonna delete that entire side, and this entire side. Oh no. Okay, so never mind, I think I'm just gonna put some, uh, ground spikes over here. Gonna save this ground spike design to use for later. And now, under the ground spikes, I'm just gonna put a few clear grid blocks. And this style should be able to continue for this entire little bit. So now, with all the structures decorated, it's time to get on to the background. Hold shift to swipe. Done a bit of color adjusting to make the background a bit darker, and now I'm going to get on to some pulses just to make this first part feel a bit more part E. The color that these spikes is choosing is player color one, which is gray, but since there are so many of them stacked on top of each other, it's looking bright. For the foreseeable future, I will be using pink on pink. Adding player colors just made me realize that I don't know what colors the player is using, and it's for this reason why the background should probably be grayscale. One last thing that I think that I want to add is a few of these floating spike bits. These will act sort of as saw blades, but without being a saw blade. That's the first half of this completely done. I want to try something like this. I'm going to take this, copy and paste it down all 15 times. It's going to end up like this, sort of a three-part line thing. Ooh, I was just messing around with some spike things, and I made this little thing. This makes me think that I can do some orb design by layering a bunch of these on top of each other. For the middle parts of these three wide blocks, I'm going to take the half slabs and space them two times. What to do for the spikes? It's lazy, but it works. Just gonna take these ground spikes from the previous part because I think they worked really well. So now with all the basics of this done, I'm gonna try a different style of background. Again, by spamming these semi-transparent grid objects, you can create a lot of interesting shapes. 
and by varying their density, you can create different brightnesses. Wow, I've created a random tube thing. Wow, two random tube things. All of the random tube things. To add a bit of extra decoration to the ground, I'm gonna spam some chains. And I think that that is this part completed. Okay, I'm looking back on these pillars and it's just too much. That's a little bit better. Last thing to do is something in this area right here. I think I'm going to be using these little pulsing sticks right here to try and create an image. The way that I did this in box was that I just put one of these circles over the top because that sort of lines up and then just do the duplication spam trick to try and uh, draw something out. And then just use the select filter to delete them all. And I think that looks pretty good. But I'm still gonna plop a few of these up here just to fill in some space. Oh, it's just under 6,000 objects. I gotta hit that. Okay, I've just had a very silly idea. What if I just spam all of these in a row and copy and paste them a bunch? It kinda does work. And that does push us over 6,000 objects, so I'm gonna keep it. This was a pretty interesting decorating experience. It ended up with about 670 objects per second, and I've definitely learned a lot more about 1.0 decoration. Probably.